Hello everybody, and I uh, wanted to um, come to you with a little bit of uh, uh, information here that happened today. Um, also, uh, more importantly, kind of uh, stuff with trends. Um, things that I've uh, noticed uh, lately that are really starting to become a real, a real mainstream trend when it comes to investing. Um, and this also has to do with uh, precious metals. Um, so as you see in the title, um, the, uh, basically the turning tide has uh, and is starting to occur right now, big time. Uh, even more so pronounced uh, in previous months. Uh, so let's get into the content of this video. Um, first off, I wanted to let you all know that the 3% uh, yield on the 10-year treasury is absolutely the line in the sand okay if it crosses that um, there's uh, going to be some and as you can tell today uh, in the equities um, there's going to be uh, definitely noticeable changing tides happening uh, and capital shiftment um, capital transferring asset transferring so forth um, the 10-year treasury yield uh, was inching very close to three percent um, today as well as yesterday um, it started out at, uh, uh, what was it, 2.9882% at about 6.20 this morning. 3% um, actually hasn't been seen since uh, 2014. Um, you'd say, well, why does this matter? Um, well, it means that the Fed's allowing um, maturities to expire and other big players in the bond and treasury markets um, are starting to not buy. Um, so what that does is uh, it, it signals that there's other things that could be occurring, right? A video we done a while back about the Fed's uh, mandate, um, they call it a dual mandate, but really it's a triple mandate um, with max employment, um, low inflation, uh, kind of maintaining inflation, and then also um, key interest rates, okay, based upon trying to keep interest rates uh, in check. Um, and veering inflation off by using higher, uh, you know, using the uh, rate increases um, to try to knock inflation down a little bit. I hate to tell you, but the inflation is already starting to come out into the system. And uh, I believe the Fed's not going to be able to do enough rate hikes uh, enough in order to veer this uh, bank velocity, it's called. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go check that term out, bank velocity. Um, I think there's a lot of bank velocity coming out, increasing uh, inflation right now. Um, and, and also, um, we'll get into the later part of this video about uh, indications that have actually occurred already that show, in fact, the inflation is occurring. Okay. Um, so, a recession. Um, I was looking at a, uh, a, large, uh, a bunch of large commercial investment banks uh, and their hedge fund managers. And... Uh, there is a lot of them that are actually kind of starting to publicly come out now and say that it's very real possibility to have a recession once again. Well, I hate to tell you if you don't know this already, but the recession never ended. Okay, it's basically been a uh, recessionary, stag um, stagflationary, uh, controlled um, Federal Reserve in coordination with central bankers. Uh, uh, controlled depression, more or less, a uh, small depression, if you will, uh, within the uh, economic and monetary system. Um, but a lot of those uh, hedge fund managers and also these large commercial investment banks are starting to come out now and say if we do start to cross into these uh, above 3%, it's not out of the question that equities could drop um, 30 to 40% overall. None of them will say a time frame, but... Um, you know, does it really matter if that's the tra tra uh, trajectory of what's uh, to come for equities? Um, back to uh, the treasuries, okay? Higher yields mean that um, that borrowing costs um, are going to be, uh, it's going to be a larger interest on the debt along with uh, other things that are occurring right now with massive debt spending, or, or I'm sorry, uh, massive uh, deficit spending. Um, also, debt ceiling increases, um, that $1.3 that uh, was passed a while back puts us through September. Um, but you all know that's going to keep going on, right? Um, limited tax revenue from the uh, GOP's uh, tax reform plan is also putting tremendous pressure um, on the uh, fiscal side. 
of the uh, equation for the, all this, um, you know, um, and then also for the uh, U.S. Treasuries, uh, uh, they're set to where based upon the Fed's uh, fund mandates um, over the counter borrowing and foreign central banks, um, people will begin to start to exit the bond market, right? Um, and that's kind of what that 3% is telling us, that in fact this is starting to occur. Um, that the Fed basically is just allowing the maturities to roll over uh, and just roll off. Um, and they're starting to not get involved and they're starting to increase the rate increase um, to try to veer inflation off because now it's starting to show its ugly head. And it has been for quite some time. And again, we're going to get through uh, three different uh, offsetting commodities to in fact show this. Um, so the double-edged sword situation is both occurring in the monetary and the fiscal stimulus, okay, from both sides, okay, from the Fed, from monetary, and from, uh, the con uh, from Congress and the President for fiscal, okay. Um, there has been at times in the past uh, governments that this has occurred, okay, but um, it's never ended good. And I could tell you that um, some of the major uh, economic um, events uh, for monetary and fiscal, when both have occurred, um, commodities have always uh, went way up. Um, a lot of times it was masked by war, um, having to spend for war spending and stuff like that because, oh, we got all these other things going on and we blame that. Um, so there's always something else um, to blame. You know, government will always blame everything else versus uh, or another country versus their own actions. Um, and, you know, uh, Federal Reserve policy, central bank policy and stuff like that. Um, so now, as I'd mentioned before, um, in an environment like this, commodities will increase across the board, okay? Um, certain ones will fall based upon um, speculation, um, like oil, stuff like that, uh, for the short term, okay? Um, but the long-term trend, um, again, that capital, that uh, investment capital that's been shifted into stocks and um, bonds uh, for so many years now, um, all that's just pure inflation that's been occurring in speculation, day traders, um, you know, um, hedge funds that have been pushing those uh, uh, equities higher and higher. I mean, if you have uh, hundreds and hundreds of billions and trillions into an economy um, that banks basically suck all that liquidity up, they have cheap interest rates to loan uh, to uh, different individuals through fraction reserve banking, right? Fraction reserve banking, meaning they, if your deposit, they can borrow 90% of each depositor with low interest rates, therefore pushing that bank velocity up a lot more to where you're going to start to have inflation, okay? And that's what's starting to occur right now. It has been occurring, okay, in the commodities. Um, not so noticeably, but it has been occurring. And uh, let's just get into that real quick, okay? What I did is I took uh, three completely separate entities in the commodities. I, w I took one from agriculture. I took one from the precious metals. And then I took one for uh, a speculative one. Um, which uh, is also has different benchmarks for um, the way they uh, calculate inflation through the Federal Reserve, uh, which is oil. We'll go through uh, some of these. And what I did is I put down some of the uh, different percentages uh, and the highs and lows, okay? So let's take oil, okay? And again, this was just within the day, okay? And the reason I wanted to take oil specifically just for today was because it was very interesting. If you looked at what happened to oil, um, it basically was down like over one and a half percent, okay, during the day when the market was uh, dropping, okay, it was over 500 points at that point in time, okay, a lot of the, the Dow was over 500 points at that point in time down, uh, it was actually more than that, but, um, and I thought it was very interesting because at the low, during that point in time, um, uh, barrel of oil was trading around $67.79, Okay, and then it, it, it ended up uh, having a high at the point in time of $69.35, okay, during the time when the equities were dropping, okay. So what does that tell you? 
that tells you that people are starting to understand that inflation is starting to creep into the system. The Fed completely understands this, and they know this at this point in time. And along with all the fiscal things that um, governments have been doing to try to veer off um, different entities um, and try to boost um, economic productivity and GDP um, is kind of offsetting um, central bank policy, okay? And it's very interesting because you're getting it from both sides this time. And it's going to set up for an extremely explosive situation in the commodities market. And you're starting to see some of that shift happen right now. Um, okay. Uh, for uh, silver, okay, since I, since I follow silver. Uh, today, the intraday trading was down to $16.55. Um, the high was $16.73. Okay, and I thought it was very interesting to note that... Um, still, as of today, pretty much all the equity markets are down across the board, okay? And they're down well over 8 or 9% for the year, okay? That's just for the year, okay? Now, silver, uh, year-to-date percentage change is only down 2.11%. Yeah, that's it. Down 2.11%. And if you want to talk about the equities, okay, the equities have fallen a lot more than that. So the fact of the matter is if you diversified some of your holdings um, and you decided to own physical to offset your differences for your uh, uh, asset risk, right, you would have kind of maintained yourself, wouldn't you have, right? Um, and again, uh, that's at a very small percentage rate based upon what you have in your equities, okay? The bonds would offset some of that. But now what you're starting to have is you're starting to have the bonds are starting to tank, equities are starting to tank, and now it's starting to come to light that people are starting to realize that a lot of this asset uh, capital is starting to shift into the commodities, okay? Um, now, the last one I wanted to do was uh, an agriculture product, uh, which is uh, uh, with the trade war kind of still going on. It has been going on. It's probably going to speed up. Um, soybeans, okay? There's uh, stiff tariffs on soybeans. And I wanted to do this one because I was like, hey, you know, this, that could be very interesting to, to see the, uh, the uh, outcome on that, okay, with everything that's been going on, okay, between the struggles of the, the yields on, on the 10-year, along with the bonds, the treasuries, um, you know, along with equities and uh, all, everything going on you can think of, okay? You know, monetary, fiscal battling each other, you know. And with all that going on, okay, and with strong tariffs, the soybeans, okay, for one year, okay, the low was 917 per bushel, and the high was 1,079 per bushel. And we're actually up near the highs right now, okay. And it's very interesting because you have a lot of uh, uh, export taxes on that, but yet the price is still going up. That's inflation, folks. That's that's inflation. Okay, sure, it it's going to have a, a impact with the uh, price in dollars for export imports, right? But still, the price over a one year, well before this trade war, the tariffs were even talked about, was already going up. Okay, that is another example of inflation starting to show, and that's why the Fed feels like they really have to start pushing rates higher and higher, is because you got multiple things going on right now. Um, so really, what does this boil down to? This basically is boiling down to the point where we're starting to see a major shift in capital, okay, investment capital. A lot of shifts are starting to happen. Um, and what do you think is going to happen, folks, when people are starting to get scared out of the bonds because they realize once that smoke screen has been pulled back that the central banks have been basically propping it up for several years now, and there's a lot of buyers not wanting to get in because of maybe the trade war intensifies, maybe even goes into a currency war, which could very well end up happening, I think. It's very plausible. I don't see any reason why it couldn't. Um, if anyone has any ideas to where it wouldn't, I'd be very interested to know. Um, so along with that, um, why would you not want to own precious metals? I, don't, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want to, you know especially to diversify yourself. If you have a good, strong retirement fund, a good, strong portfolio um, that you're managing, or you have uh, ways that you can uh, diversify yourself and get into commodities, 
or maybe even start to uh, take some of your cash out of the bank and start to buy some physical precious metals um, to have a good diversification, which, you know, uh, if you're older, you know, if you had a 10% holding, um, you know, 15% would be pretty modest to be able to offset some of your gains, seeing that you don't want to take much risk when you get older and you're getting closer to retirement. And even at that's, you know, even with that being said, you know, when you have, uh, you know, bonds, those are always traditionally the safe havens that a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, close to retirees that have been saving their productivity and, and uh, through taxation all these years uh, to be able to get to. So they start to go to these safe havens, right? And, uh, um, you know, want to just get a small percentage and just kind of sit on what they've had, right? They're going to start getting scared out of that too um, because, you know, it's going to start to be a situation where they might not want to, be keeping their uh, productivity save there. Um, they obviously ain't going to want to get into equities. So if you have the baby boom generation coming on and they're starting to retire by by the boatloads now, you know, there's a whole lot of reasons here, folks, to where uh, commodities and uh, particularly if you have people that have saved a long time and have like bank CDs, cash CDs, and they want to start cashing some of that out and uh, uh, securing that and uh, pres you know preserving their wealth. Um, because everything else is starting to implode around them, you could be really setting yourself up for a pretty explosive situation in commodities uh, and with uh, precious metals being off the map where all of a sudden your currency disappears and uh, next thing you know, there's lots of people starting to wanting to get rid of their cash uh, and just you know want to buy safes or safety deposit boxes and just wants to have uh, physical gold, uh, physical gold or silver. Um, yeah. <laughs> all this stuff is not, uh, not a, uh, brainstorm anymore. Um, it's, it's plausible from basically every single angle you could possibly think of. So my question to all you would be, if you don't own precious metals, why don't you? Too many reasons why not to. I'll take care.